Hey guys, in this video we've got the Traxxas Slash Ultimate. Now, we've never had one of these in the studio before, but we've driven some that belong to our friends. And these things are pretty intriguing. This one's got a low center of gravity chassis and a bunch of cool little upgrades that the standard Slash does not possess. In this video, we're going to get it out of the box. We're going to see what makes it tick. Then we're going to take it out and test it. And then we're going to bring it back inside and let you know what happened. And we're going to go ahead and give you our ratings at the end. So let's get started. Check this out. Okay, so let's go ahead and get this thing out of the box. Now, I don't have to cut the tape on this because this was a display model, so I know what it is. But let's have a look. Here we go. Cool. There's the packet. And there's the radio and this has the link connector already in it so that's pretty cool what i really like is right away you can see the stance of the vehicle this thing sits nice and crouched it sits real low and this is the centon 3s from arma and look how high all of this is look at the clearance on the fender wells the attitude the way it sits up and that one's all stock this one's still stock but look how low to the ground it is that should make it handle really good in racing situations. I'm really excited to see what's inside of it, but before we do, let's see what comes in the box. All right, so let's start with the radio. This is the TQI or top qualifier. It's 2.4 gigahertz, and this is Traxxas's mainstay radio system. This seems to come with most of their kits, and it's pretty straightforward on what it has for controls on it. And on the back, this, since this is the ultimate, this one actually comes with the link connector, which allows you to hook that to your phone and you'll have a lot more controls over your car. And it's a pretty cool looking deal. It's really comfortable in the hand. Everything feels real good as far as spring tension and all that goes. Just generally a pretty quick and decent radio. So I like those. A lot of them don't come with the link connector. I'm glad this one does because I think it's cheap when they don't give that to you. So this is cool. Also in the packet, Here's what you get there. All right, first off, we get some foam blocks, we got some body discs here, and we've got some extra body clips. That's pretty nice. Also, you get a pretty decent tool kit, what it looks like. Nice wheel wrench, another wrench there for shocks, just basic adjustable stuff. It does have some Allen wrenches, just a standard little tool kit. Also, it appears to come with a speed pinion, so that's pretty cool. But if you do put one of these on, always mind your temperatures because they can get out of pocket really fast. And like a friend of mine did, you can cook it and take your motor right to the ground. Also, it comes with your warranty information here. It has, and this is the cool one, guys. This one actually has all of the blowouts for it. So you can see all of the part numbers and how things go together. This is the one you need to hang on to. Aside from that, this one here covers some of the basics about the radio, some of the options that you can get for it. Pretty cool stuff there. This is some more extra stuff that you can get from Traxxas. Shows you how all this works with basically the chargers, the batteries that they recommend, and all that cool stuff. Then you get this. 
This one is the quick start guide and this will walk you through setup in a heartbeat. That's what comes in the box. Okay, so now that we got that out of the way, let's take a look at the car and let's look at the outside first. You know, the slash body's pretty slick. It's really nice. I'm not a real fan of the colors, but I didn't have a whole lot of options at the time. So I went ahead and grabbed this one, but I do have a backup for that. Still, the shape and design of it, it's really a cool looking truck. The tires look pretty impressive. The wheels are all chromed out, looking really slick there. Check that out, pretty nice. Underneath here, it does have the lower suspension. And so it does seem to sit pretty low as far as how the chassis sits to the ground. According to how my friends sat, this one should sit quite a bit lower. So let's get the body off and check it out. So looking down inside of this thing, it looks very similar to what we have in the Fiesta back there, which is basically built on this platform. It's slightly different. It's not exactly the same, but it looks about the same design. It does have the 3500 kV motor in it. It has a decent speed control. I don't know a lot about this one yet. We'll have to try it to find out. We do have the radio box here and it looks to be a pretty solid box and it's probably fairly weatherproof. We'll test that as well. Servo is buried down here and access to the servo horn is underneath. If you guys run Traxxas, you already know this, but it does appear to have some sort of, I don't know if it's a slipper or if it's an actual differential in here. We'll pull it apart and see. I just want to learn for myself. I don't necessarily want to pull everything off the box and just spit that out to you. I want to look for myself to see what's in there. The suspension is good and it appears to have the Rustler drive shafts. These are a lot thicker than what came on my friend's slash. So that's pretty cool too. It does have aluminum parts on the out bits here and that's pretty slick. I mean, I understand that's a pretty good upgrade as well. So all in all, it looks like a pretty decent build. This one also comes from the factory with the sway bars, which was an add-on my friend had to put on his. So that's pretty slick. Okay, so I ran across this little guy in there and this tells you right off the bat right here, and here's a closer picture, this shows you exactly what's going on with the settings. Right off the bat, this thing, according to this little flyer, is set up for nickel metal hydride. And that's fine if those are the batteries you're gonna run. But if you plan to run LiPo, follow the directions here. It'll show you how to adjust it so that you can get your LiPo systems to work properly. Don't skip this step if you are gonna run LiPos. Okay, so there's the Traxxas Slash Ultimate, and that's our first look. I'm pretty impressed with what I see. You know, it doesn't look like it's a sturdy, heavy basher. We'll find out about that, but it does look like it's something that's gonna perform well. I've done my share of racing, and everything is kind of light and nimble. I, I really think it's gonna work well on the track. So there's one thing, though, that I don't want to destroy, and this is the original body and that has a pretty cool paint design i'm not a fan of the blue that's in there but at the same time this is pretty cool so i went and got a basher body for it here it is so this is the one we're going to run on it and this matches the x max which i couldn't pass it up it wasn't all that expensive well it costs a bit but it wasn't all that expensive when you consider buying a new one anyway so when you see it out on the track that's the one you're gonna look for. All right, nothing left to do, but take it out and test it. Check this out.
Okay guys, there's the running footage for the Traxxas Slash Ultimate. Now, this is a really cool truck. I really had a good time with it and it is surprisingly durable. I was expecting a little more failure in it. My friends, he has one of the, it's the black and white Fox version. It's not the Ultimate version and he seems to be wrenching on his all the time. We pushed this for a lot of different batteries and we got after this as hard as we could and we took it places it wasn't supposed to go and still we had minimal failure. And when we did finally have failure within the car, I have to say, we definitely earned it. Okay, so that being said, let's get right down in this thing and show you what's up as far as the car itself goes. This handled admirably. It's really a tough car. We had no failures in the chassis. The suspension, we did have one failure in the suspension and it was this arm. And I don't fault this arm at all. It took a lot of punishment for, before it broke. So this is a really tough car when it comes to that. We did also rip this wheel off. And what happened is the drive stud that comes out failed right at the pin. So the whole wheel assembly came off and that's this bit here. And all it did was break it right there. And that's where the pin's at. If you can get a close look at that there, that's where the pin's at. And it just broke that shaft at the weak point. And I don't fault that either because it did take a pretty ugly tumble, but the suspension arm simply broke this front part of the spindle. This is actually the, where the hinge pin goes through. It just broke the top off of that, but it took a lot of punishment to get it to do that. So overall, I'd say it worked really well. The speed control, the radio, the motor, everything worked really good. Like I said, we did not gear this up, so it's still running the stock gearing. So everything you saw in the video was 3S stock setting straight out of the box. This does have a slipper in it that handled really well. I was really pleased to find that out. And I know it shows it on the box, but I wanted to pull it apart and see for myself. And sure enough, that's what's in there. As far as everything else goes, all of the compression rings up in the front here, the bumpers held up good, didn't have any failure in any of that. The whole chassis, everything is still tight. The steering works good. The radio is excellent. But when you get this thing out on pavement, where you got like 100% traction, it has a tendency to get really squirrely. So that's where turning up that gyro or TSM system makes a difference. So if you turn it up too high, it'll serpentine at high speed because it gets a little out of pocket, doesn't know what to do, can't react fast enough. But when you run it right around 50, 55%, it smooths it right out and then it becomes really controllable and you can do whatever you want to. However, it is a short course truck, so when you turn it high speed on the pavement, you're gonna go chasing it because it will loop over and roll. So there's the standard, you know, the standard handling of a short course truck. Also, we did push this into some pretty good jumps and it's not designed for that. I'm already aware of that. It's got a low center of gravity chassis. When you come down off of a large jump, it cases immediately. There's almost no suspension there to prevent it. And it still held up perfectly. We hit that big jump probably 10 times, somewhere in there. And we did have a couple of bad landings. Um, we had a few good landings. Um, we had a few where we didn't quite get to the ramp like we were supposed to. But at the same time, with all the cartwheeling and tumbling at long range, it still didn't break anything. The shocks are in perfect condition. The differentials are still in excellent condition. It didn't bend any of the sway bars. Everything looks just like it did when it came out of the box. Once I washed it up, it looked the same. All that aside, let's take a moment and talk about the body for a second. Now, this is the stock one, of course, and we didn't run this one, so it really does look nice. However, the one we bashed was this one. And if you take a look inside, you'll see typical wear in there. There's wear points where the tires actually hit up in here and you can actually see through where it wore through the paint, this area, this area. And what I would recommend doing there is get some clear packaging tape and put a couple layers in here. And that'll allow the tires to rub on the tape and not the paint. And that will help keep the erosion down. You can put it in any of the wear points. As you watch your body deteriorate and you go for a new one, you can see where your wear points are and add the tape in those locations. It will definitely help things hold up. As far as that goes, we have one small spot here where the tire, and we'll get to the tires in a minute, guys, but where the tire actually wore into this and it created a hole, but there's no cracking or tearing in the body. And my friend's car, he's already destroyed one completely. Now, part of that is driving style, I know. 
The other part is, this feels like a pretty rigid body. It's got some pretty thick plastic to it. This is one that I bought off the shelf at the hobby store. So this is a replacement body. I don't know if it's exactly the same, but let's feel this one. It feels like it's got the same plastic between the two and it's a really good body. It's aerodynamic, but when you get off the ramp, look at, this, look at how much air is in that. See how big that is? When you get off the ramp, here's what happens. So if you hit and get some decent air, let's get this thing pinned down. Where's the pins at? There we go. Okay, so when you get this thing on the ramp and you catch some air, look at the big holes right in here. This grabs air like crazy. Basically that body, as big and wide as it is, is a parachute and it grabs the air so it makes it really difficult to control your car in the air because it just basically takes your aerodynamics and goes wherever it wants to. Also, the tires are pretty small, they're only like so, and there's not a lot of mass there, so when you hit the brakes to try and get the nose down, there's not a lot of inertia to spend fighting the shape of the body. The body has a lot of pull to it, and so you hit the brakes and it might come down an inch or two, but it's not enough to rotate it and get the nose down where you want it. So on bigger jumps, you're gonna have some bad landing areas because this really isn't designed for that. It's designed for shorter ramps, small hops, and back on the throttle and go. It's basically built as a race car, and it's a darn good one. It does handle really well. It does great on the track. Unfortunately, this one's 10th scale, and our tracks are built for 8th and 5th scale cars, so the jumps are a little big for this one. Still, on the oval track, this thing was a guided missile. It went super fast, and it was a lot of fun. Okay, so let's take a minute and talk about the tires for a second. Now, these are really amazing tires. They've got really good traction. They work really good, and out of the box, they're pretty well balanced, but in typical tracks as fashion, these are not vented, and they do collect debris on the inside, and they get out of balance. And what happened here is on this one, and both of the rear tires suffered this, they took on some debris, and they got out of balance, and what happened was it had a tendency to pull the rubber off of the rim. Now, I don't know what the deal is with that. Um, I had to glue a couple of these and get them back in shape, but they came apart again, and it just has a hard time holding on to these. Now, on one side, these are chromed, and chrome wheels, in my experience, have had trouble holding on to the glues, and they come loose. You know, it held up for a while, but then they came loose. And on the inside here, you can see it's not chromed. So I don't understand why it's not holding on to the rim the way it's supposed to, but it did come loose on two of these tires. But if you can get them to stay on the rims, these tires are amazing. They work really well. They're a good shape, everything. I would recommend putting a venting system on them, one, two, three, to let it shed the debris. But, you know, they still ran pretty good for what they were. All right, guys, that being said, that brings us down to our four questions. Number one, is it fun? Two, is it durable? Three, is it worth the money? And number four, where does it stack up in the collection? And this one might just shock you. Check this out. Question one, is this thing fun? Hell yeah, this thing's fun. This is probably the coolest short course truck in the 10th scale class that I've run yet. And I've run several and this one is really cool. As far as that goes, it handles the way you want it to, it does what you expect it to, and it's faster than you'd expect. So all of that is pretty cool. For that reason, we're gonna give this one nine out of 10 for fun. And question number two, durability. Is this thing durable? Yes, this is a very durable short course truck. You know, it does have kind of the short arms, which is, you know, the series kind of carries that. Everything held up really good. The drive lines were good. We did have to repair that one, but it was a really bad landing that caused that, guys, and I don't think anything would have held up to that. So as far as durability goes, this is a really tough truck, and for that reason, it gets 9 out of 10 for durability. And question number three, is it worth the money? Well, now that's always an interesting question, because if you have the money, that's one thing, but if things are tight, this might be a little more than you can afford. Now, it is right around 500 plus. It's not all that expensive over that, but that is still a lot of money for a short course truck. But is it worth that amount for what you get? This one actually comes with the radio and the link controller, and both of those work admirably. When we first put things together, and we turned on the link module and connected it to the app, it took about 20 minutes for it to update the receiver, 
and the radio and get everything linked up. But once it did, we were able to get inside the application. We could tune the brakes. We could turn the, tune the way the throttle works, the reaction points. Everything seemed to be settable in there. However, you are connected hardline to your TSM on the radio, so you can't adjust that in the app. It's right on the radio. Other than that, it does give you all those options, which makes it really nice. It has some aluminum upgrades in there. It's a really tough truck for what they've done to it. And if this is your thing, if this is what you really love, and I understand why you Traxxas guys, and I'm one of those, I love Traxxas too, but I understand why the Traxxas fans dig this car. This is one of the most sold cars around the planet, not just the Ultimate, but the Slash in general. And I understand why that is. And for that reason, we're gonna give it nine out of 10 for value. So there you go, guys. That's the score for the Traxxas Slash Ultimate. It comes in at a rocking 27 out of 30, which is amazing considering I do kind of see the 8th scale cars and bigger as more machines than I see the 10th scale cars, but this one brought that love for 10th scale right back for me. It's a really amazing thing, and every car in our top 10 right now is bigger than 10th scale. So will this even make the rating system at all? That's what we're going to find out right now. This thing was so much fun to drive that it's actually going to make it into the top 10 by the skin of its teeth landing at number 10, the Traxxas Slash Ultimate. So hey guys, if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. It's awesome when you do, and we really appreciate the feedback when you guys have something to say. You know, we really like getting our hands on the new tech like this stuff. This is really cool, and it gives us something to think about. Where's the hobby heading, and what's available to people nowadays? If you have a Traxxas Slash Ultimate, and you've done some mods to it, or noticed a few things that we missed, please feel free to leave it in the comments down below and help others along the way. Hey guys, I'm AJ with AJ Jam Studios saying, keep bashing guys.